nice new brother WP1 word processor. I could connect the Raspberry Pi up to the UART. I am actually going to take the time to write a whole new terminal emulator. Okay, um, I think I'm going to call this relatively complete. I mean, there's more little bugs to fix, but I don't think I'm going to do those on video because it's just not very interesting. I do wish I had hardware flow control. Also, the one thing I haven't done anything about is italicized, underlined, and bold text, and of course, reverse text. So I'm wondering what I can do about that. I am going to do some experimenting and then I will come back and report. I got a parcel. Let's see what's inside, shall we? careful about exposing my address because I really don't want to have to go through and pixelate stuff out. Okay. All right. What do we have here? This is, well, as you can probably guess, this is a PCB. Indeed, you can actually see it's a PCB through the plastic. This is the first time I've ever had a PCB made, so I don't know what to expect. Apart from a lot of smell of plastic, well... That looks super nice. It's probably all wrong, but it looks super nice, and... Surface mount components, hopefully correct. This is, if it works, the actual, quote, production version of that big tangle of wires that is now no longer on my desk. So we've got here the brother PCB. This will push down onto here via a connector. The, the, where did I put the, so the Raspberry Pi goes on here. This is the wrong Raspberry Pi. The right Raspberry Pi goes on here. And Wow, the footprint actually lines up. That's amazing. And this, the uh, the PSOC interface board goes on here, upside down. Now, there doesn't actually need to be enough space. I made a estimate as to the amount of vertical space, but... Okay, well, let's do a little bit of testing, I think. Oh yes, before we do anything else, let's see what else there is in our bag of goodies. Well, five of these, because you can only make five as a lower limit. You can have two assembled, but given the small number of components, it actually cost something like 50 cents extra to have all five assembled. So I now have quite a lot of these. I suppose that'll be useful if it dies. I was wondering if I would also get the solder mask stencil. I've never seen one. This is, I believe, it's a sheet of plastic that goes on the PCB with holes where all the surface mount stuff are, is, whatever. As you see, I labelled most of the pins, but like an idiot, I didn't label the power pins. That's annoying. Uh, but I do know that... 
ground is down here and five volts is up there. So if we turn this over, we've got, actually there's an actual power connector which is labeled. I try to put as many pin headers on as possible. Here we go. 5 volts, 3.3 volts and ground. So uh, we have are we powered on? Now we're powered on. All right. So this is ground and this is 5 volts. We have a red light. Good, that means I got the diode the right way around, which is always a bit of a surprise. Let's turn the voltage down to three volts. And we've got ground and this one is 3.3 .3 volts. And on, there we go. And the other LED comes on. And it looks like I calculated the resistances roughly correctly, which is nice. Okay, well, that shows us at least some of the wiring's up to scratch. I think the next thing I'm going to need to do is to put some pin headers on this thing. Yeah, just thinking about vertical height. Well, I know that these and these need to have pin headers, so I'll do those first. I'm still thinking about this one. All right. Soldering time. Well, that was more annoying than I expected, but then it always is. Uh, apparently I am running out of these pin sockets and I'm going to have to order some more. So I had to do quite a lot of careful shaving to let me connect up multiple sockets in a row. Anyway, if you bring the motherboard over, this is supposed to push on here. Actually, I will do that bit last. But anyway, this, the PSOC board plugs on here. Um, I have not soldered up these four because I would have needed to shave another set of headers and I was running out and I couldn't be bothered. The Raspberry Pi pushes on here.
like so. And I need to figure out those bolts. That's actually looking pretty good. Now this then connects on here. like so. The control lines which come from the sockets here will then need to get wired up to here. Uh, we also need to wire up the reset switch and the power switch. 5 volt comes off the board here uh, through the connector and is then used to drive the PSOC board and the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi's 3.3 volt regulator is then used to uh, drive the conversion electronics which are on the bottom here uh, and also energize the two LEDs. Uh, the power switch connects 5 volts up from here to the Raspberry Pi and it now occurs to me that I completely forgot to put the PSOC board downstream of the power switch, so that will always be powered up. The other connectors on the board are for other things that uh, I was... I tried to put as much as possible onto this board because uh, these things are not cheap to make. I think I spent 30 odd francs on these five boards which is only six francs a board, which is fine, but I needed five of them. And more importantly, about two or three weeks delivery. So uh, I'm hoping that these will last. Uh, I spot here, I actually routed those tracks too close to the standoff for the Raspberry Pi and there's no solder mask on them. I think they're all right. But yeah, so Mark II of this board, and I'm sure Mark II will be necessary. We'll have to have that fixed. So anyway, the first thing I'm going to do is to take this off again. Remove the electronics. Yeah, creaky. And then we're going to power the bare board up from the brother and see if the various pins are all showing the right voltages. So we've got power wires. Let me just hook up the Okay, we're off, set the voltage to 5 volts, set the current to, let's go for 200 milliamps, there's no floppy disk attached so that should be okay, and power, okay, need more current. Three hundred. Okay, right, and I can see there is a LED on under there, which is good. That means that 0 and 5 volts are more or less correct on the brother. I haven't bothered to hook up any of the uh, I haven't bothered to hook up, hook up the screen. So we stick this somewhere where it's readable. Try and disentangle the wires. That will do. Okay, put that on zero, and we should be seeing five volts on one side of the power switch, not that side. Not that side either. Am I doing this right? 
5 volts. Okay, so the 5 volt line should be up here somewhere. 5 volts. Power? 5 volts. There we go. There's my 5 volts. So that should be going to, I think it's this pin. No. One of these pins for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, this one is 3.3, .3, so that should be disconnected, which it is. My um, thought, I need to, I need to get the pin out, honestly. Oh, of course, I'm not getting any voltage here. The power switch isn't connected up. Okay, let's ignore those for the time being. Right now, we've got the P sock. I think this one's power. It is. Um, and ground, I think, is opposite. No, it's not. Luckily, everything's labelled. And we are this way up. So ground is this one. Zero power. Power. OK, that looks plausible. So let's power the thing off and the LED goes out. And plug the thing in. And let's turn this over so that you can see the back side. Okay, power. All right, that was over current. Presumably because the PSOC is using more. I would have expected the light to come on, actually. Let's... Uh, oh, of course, the PSOC doesn't have a power light. It only has a status light, and the current software loadout doesn't actually light it up. I should probably change that. And D1 is lit quite brightly. I could have bumped the resistor value up a bit there. Um, I'm just wondering at what point do I decide to hook up the Raspberry Pi? Well, first I have to wire these up. And I've forgotten which one is which, so I'm going to have to go figure that out. And I need a power switch. I have some switches here that will do. And there's a couple, there's a pin header because I had a switch here that will do. All right, so I've got it all wired up. The control lines are hooked up in hopefully the right places. I have hooked up the video here and put a 9-pin sub-D here. This should let the PSOC uh, translate the video into MDA, which I should then be able to route through my OSSC, which hopefully you are seeing on screen now. I have, do not have the Raspberry Pi hooked up because I am not a complete idiot and I've got the keyboard so let's hit the power button and see what happens uh, that was my power supply complaining because it drew more than half an amp I'm trying to remember what it drew last time I think it was actually quite a lot particularly with the floppy drive connected is it that much? I'll turn it up a little. Okay, and oh, good grief. It worked. Huh. I was honestly not expecting that. I thought it was going to fail miserably. 
So this is actually booted into the onboard software because I don't have the Raspberry Pi hooked up yet. But uh, we've got relatively decent video. I'm afraid I've still got capture problems, so it looks kind of clunky. Um, yep, the onboard beeper works, which is nice. Huh, well. Um, oh yeah, let's just tr try the reset button, which is bodged in here. Perfect. So I think the only thing remaining to do is to hook up the Raspberry Pi and the floppy disk drive. I'm actually quite nervous. Okay, we have the floppy disk drive, we have the Raspberry Pi. Power switch is off. Hold down Control Q and hit the button. Okay, uh, I expect this to use a lot more current because it now has to, well, it's not powering the Raspberry Pi yet, but there is a lot of surge in rush from this thing. So let's try it at 800 milliamps or not. I'm trying to think it was a, was an amp reasonable for last time? Yeah, that's and the rubber band is still dodgy. Yeah, it's hitting 900 milliamps, so let's just cr crank it up one more notch. Okay, so hold down code Q and boot. Right, we're now into the terminal. So, moment of truth time. Oh yes, you can see a red light there. Watch for it to get brighter when I press the switch. Not what I was expecting, but let's try rebooting it. Okay, well I expect the Raspberry Pi, yeah I can see the lights in here. Is it doing anything? Well, the fact that the lights are on in the Raspberry Pi itself, and that we've got an extra light here, suggests that the 3.3 volt regulator on the Raspberry Pi is working just fine. The fact that we're not getting anything coming out here suggests that um, I may have got my level shifter incorrect. Okay, let's just power cycle the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, turning the Raspberry Pi on causes the brother to reboot. I'm also not seeing any flashing lights on the Raspberry Pi as it attempts to boot. So... Let's try plugging the SD card back in. Also the... It's all getting quite heavy, so I should really... Oops, I haven't soldered this connector on yet. It just pushes into place. There's plenty of friction. Um, I need to design... Once I have it working, I'm going to design and 3D print a outer... Well, a, a complete cartridge with supports in it for going into the brother's case. Okay, now that that's plugged in... This is turned on, so all I need is power and boot. Uh, do I get, am I getting flashing lights in the Raspberry Pi? Yes, I am. The Raspberry Pi is booting. Uh, we should start seeing output soon if it's going to work. That don't look like it's working to me. Uh, do I get... I can't remember whether I get console output. I 
And unfortunately, the HDMI output for the Raspberry Pi is facing the PSOC, so that is inaccessible. But I'll just leave it like this for a couple of minutes and just see what comes out, if anything. Okay, that's not working. So I am going to power it all off without restarting the, without shutting down the Raspberry Pi, of course. And I'm going to hook the scope up and check for some voltages, I think. Well, I've checked the pin out with the help of the schematic, which I made, and everything looks all right. I've also soldered a capacitor across the five volt power rail over here in the hope that turning the thing on will not cause the brother to crash. So let's give it a try with the Logic Pro, which is this thing, which will beep, uh, sorry, which will flash lights when it sees logic pulses. So it's really useful for watching for activity on things. So let us power on. Okay, it's booted. Now let's 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 not do anything just yet. So if I were to touch it to something that's doing something, like say the clock line here, you can see uh, pulse is lit, meaning it's seeing pulses. One and zero are both lit because it's seeing ones and zeros. So if we touch this to serial 5 volts TX and then press keys on the keyboard, then nothing happens. Interesting. I would expect to see more than that. We would expect to see lots of activity on the various data and address lines as the brother is doing its thing. So D0, yes. IOE, yes. Read, yes. Write, yes. Interesting. So, let's try I did actually figure out how to do flow control. That's only working in one direction currently, from the brother to the Raspberry Pi, which lets me run everything at 115 kiloboard, which is nice. I didn't bother going in the other direction because the brother cannot send bytes to the Raspberry Pi fast enough. But I'm kind of surprised that we're not seeing anything here. This suggests that the bus interface is not working. Now these are should all be hooked up correctly. I double check this pin out too. Okay, let's try turning on the Raspberry Pi and we should see stuff show up on the serial T on the low voltage TX line. This is as the Raspberry Pi does its booting. And let's hope it doesn't crash the brother when it does this. Maybe I need a bigger capacitor. Anyway, it should now be booting. There we go, pulses. This means that the Raspberry Pi is actually sending serial traffic. So let's try that again. I've turned it off. Let's try that again, but looking at the RX line on the high voltage on the high voltage side. This will tell us if the pulses are being translated to five volts correctly. There we go. So my level shifter does seem to work. This suggests that the problem is the bus shifter, uh, the bus interface in here. So I think the only possible things that can be wrong, given that it's running the same software on the same PSOC board, is uh, 
that these aren't wired up correctly. But KiCad, which I designed this thing with, shouldn't let me get that wrong. Okay, so, all right, let's turn everything off. And unplug all the things. Yeah, I soldered this on now. And let's just check the pinouts. Check the continuity. Come on, unplug. I actually, I do wonder whether my shoddy connectors are in fact too shoddy. Okay, well, I'm just going to beep out these connections just to make sure that everything seems to be intact, I think. Well, that's annoying. Everything seems to be fine. It'd be so much easier if it was a simple issue like that. Um, I'm slightly wondering whether the problem is some of my implicit assumptions about things like orientation, given that the board push pushes down onto the brother motherboard. I did design the thing with this side here on top, so I was looking down on everything. That did require me to throw away and redesign the board from scratch when I realised I'd put the PSOC device on the top. But let's just do a few quick checks to see whether the data lines line up with where I think. You see, data's over here. Yes. Oh ho! Did I get these wrong? I swapped read and write, that's what's wrong. Okay, so that's black and red. So swap these two. And let's get rid of the logic probe. And plug this in. Actually, <laughs> I do want the logic probe. And let's turn it on and see what happens. Oops, I want to re I want to boot, where I put the reset button is here. Okay, so now if I watch the TX line and press a key, haha, -ha! look, pulses, it works, it works. Let's power on the Raspberry Pi. Hold down control and Q, because of course it's going to boot the reboot the brother. Uh, tell you what. Let's plug the Raspberry Pi in first, shall we? So we are off. If this actually works, I'll be astonished. My first ever PCB, working first time, that's ridiculous. Okay, power on the brother. Reboot the brother. Uh, reboot the brother again. 
and see what ha see what happens. Okay, that's kind of garbage. That is actually more or less what I expect. The flow control stuff I've put in only kicks in after uh, you've, after the you, you log in. The problem is I couldn't figure out how to run the command to enable flow control early in boot. Shut up. So you've got to wait for the login prompt and you'll get garbage before then as the Raspberry Pi is sending data to the brother way faster than the brother is capable of accepting it. But I will not expect to see that. That looks like the terminal is crashed, to be honest. Let's try rebooting the terminal. That's just powered down everything because with the Raspberry Pi running and the floppy disk drive and the PSOC, that hits over current protection. Let's put that up to 1.2 amps, I think. Okay, go. Now, of course, the Raspberry Pi is rebooting. I thought I'd fixed most of the terminal bugs but that does not look fixed to me. So let's just reboot the brother again while the Raspberry Pi is booting. Interesting. I suspect that once the while the Raspberry Pi is starting up, it's drawing a lot of current. So let's turn that up again and have another go. Okay, Raspberry Pi startup and garbage and restart the brother. I saw the power supply spike at about 1.2 amps. So let's just hit return a few times. There's a login prompt. So, move this off screen. Okay. Um, so it does say configuring serial terminal at the end, but we're not getting a prompt. Why are we not getting a prompt? Configuring serial terminal is produced by my script that runs a command, what I got off GitHub, to configure the serial port. It turns on flow control. Uh, in fact, I'd forgotten earlier that the blue LED on the PSOC board, that's now of course on the underneath where you can't see it, lights up when the buffer from the Raspberry Pi to the brother is full. Interesting. See, I am confused because it should be working. There's enough in operation to know that we're getting serial communication from the Raspberry Pi to the brother and everything should be fine. So I do not know why it's locked up at this point. Let's actually just probe a few voltages, shall we? Let's just see what we're getting. So this is five volts provided from the brother to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, put this somewhere where people can see it. Uh, 4.89 volts. And this is the 3.3 volts generated by the Raspberry Pi from that 5 volts. 
which is dead on as we would expect given the uh, the Raspberry Pi's regulator. So I think the Raspberry Pi thinks it's working unless it's drawn too much current, which I doubt. So unless the terminal's crashed, let's once more get the, the logic probe out. I cannot say the phrase logic probe without thinking of a scene from Tron. That would be a great meme to paste in here if I was willing to do copyright things. Okay, serial 5 volts TX. Let me type. Right, the terminal is running, otherwise that wouldn't work. So RX on the low voltage side. Yep, pulses are making it across the border to here. Pulses, yes. Wouldn't expect to see anything there. Uh, RTS is low. So that CTS on the brother side is pointing at RTS on the Pi side. That's here, which is also low. This means that the brother is ready to receive data. And CTS on this side is high, meaning that the Pi is not ready to read data. That should end up here, which is high, and that should end up an RTS on the, the PSOC side, which is then being ignored because I haven't written that bit of software. That should be here. So the Raspberry Pi is not ready for data. That's, that's surprising. That explains why it's not responding, but why is that happening? I think I've figured out what's going on. And the actual fault is trivial, which is I've got the CTS and RTS lines the wrong way around. But the reason behind that is annoyingly complicated. You see, which one is which of CTS and RTS, and of TX and RX for that matter, depends very much where you're standing. There are two types of serial device. There's a DTE, a data terminal device, environment, DT something. This is generally a computer or a actual terminal. And there's a DCE, data communications something, which is a communications device like a modem. And DCEs have these pins inverted relative to a DTE so that you can compare like for like. So that if you're connecting a terminal to a modem, you just wire up the TX lines to each other, the RX lines to each other, CTS, RTS, and so on. Uh, this is made slightly more complicated in the fact that I actually did manage to get RTS and CTS the wrong way around in my head. RTS is the output line, CTS is the input line on a DTE. Of course, on a DCE, it's the other way around. Now, I have no idea why this all worked in my tangle of wires on the desk prototype, but possibly I had managed to uh, get the semantics backwards and also wire it up backwards, therefore resulting in it working. And of course, I have no records of what I did then, so I've no, I, no way of knowing exactly what happened. But the fix, if I'm right, should be simple, which is I just need to swap the lines. And luckily, I don't need to modify the board. Because I added the extra uh, level shifter and wired up the, uh, the CTS line to the PSOC, I should just be able to reassign pins in the PSOC and do it all in software. So 
I'm going to give that a try and see what happens. OK, let's see what happens. Power on. Oh, code Q, power on. And we boot. The Raspberry Pi is starting up. We get serial output. We wait for it to get to the login prompt. We keep waiting for it to get to the login prompt. It's not the fastest booting device. OK, so let's just log in. OK, despite the message, it has not configured the serial terminal. It has enabled uh, CTS, RTS and the hardware, but I need to turn it on in the TTY with uh, RTS, CTS. OK, let's see what happens. Looking good. Let's try yes. Well, there's a bit of noise at the top of the screen, but I can see that the blue light is on, which means the buffer is full, and we get a nice steady stream of Ys with no noise. Fantastic. It works. Took long enough. OK, I believe that this is now mostly finished. I need to reassemble it in the actual machine. I need to 3D print a uh, plastic cartridge thing to fill the expansion slot that's got mounts for these switches and buttons and holes for these connectors. But I think that all the electrical bits, except for a custom harness for the video, because I want to be able to route the video to the board so that I can get access to the MDA output and also to the internal monitor so that I can actually, you know, see what I'm doing. I think that is all done, which is awesome. So I think that this is going to be the second last video. The last video I will hopefully be showing off the fully reassembled machine and I will walk you through the various fixes I've done to the serial terminal, which are extensive and awesome. So, I will see you next time.